Carson is going to talk to you about a brief history of electronic music. And today's subject is on the pioneers and the innovators behind it all. And first of all, I'm just going through the things key. In the smoking area, sit the side there. Toilets on the other side of this room. And the fire exit is up by the door. And in your case of the fire, um, just follow me, but I won't last. Now the brief the outline for you is on the invaders behind music, um, electronic music. Um, I got the shot, Troy Shaw Cave timeline from 1900 to up to today. And the um, brief the show is who the people are, what they invented, their sounds, and just to show that the past always influences the future in music especially. So, first up we have a man named Thaddeus Cattle in the 1901 in the US. He invented what's known as the Cal Harmonium. <clears throat> he basically wanted to play through the phone lines and Went straight into hotels, elevators, um, restaurants, etc. It weighed seven tons when it was built because he, he found that uh, just at the same time the telephone was invented, they had uh, little generators inside the telephones that uh, they needed to have a huge generator just to pump the music down through the phone line. So it weighed seven tons, it cost $200,000, which was a lot in 1901. And only three were ever built, but um, they were scrapped eventually. And it brought this man down. He, um, because the tree were only built, it was classed as the first type of synthesizer. So um, it set the foundations for what we're going to see next, which is a man called Leon Perryman. Basically, he built this machine in uh, Russia in 1920. And as you see, you play just by waving your hands over it. There's no way um, of touching involved. He built the world's first drum machine as well. And then um, he was uh, an inventor, a Soviet inventor. He, he also um, invented the burglar alarm. And uh, he built the uh, age drop in the voices, which they built. Um, a wooden sail that the President of the United States gave the school kids to give to the Ambassador of the United States in Moscow um, and sat in the Ambassador's office for the first seven years of the Cold War. They were listening in. So if, uh, in France, we have a composer, um, Pierre Schaefer. Can you hear that? Yeah. But basically what he did was in 1948, he got um, the sound of the train and put it across several gramophones at the time, just played at different speeds <laughs> and recorded it, which set the foundation for um, what's known as sampling. We'll come back to it later on, but it's basically just taking bits of the sounds and uh, just making a new song out of them. Um, everybody's at it today, so that's why he came in. So basically what in the 1950s the BBC built and what Pierre Schaefer had done with tape, these added in what was known as tone generators. Basically um, what they did was recorded sound, got little bits of tape, cut them up and uh, just let them move. Let's we'll see in the next video what happens. Well basically the BBC is responsible for it's not the doctor who came. The woman called Dahlia Davishore, and she was never credited for her contribution to music. And back in the, the 50s and 60s, women weren't allowed to run 
Uh, we've already showed you around there that was BBC Brota and as it happened, Stadia Derbyshire was refused the job because she was a woman to run the studio. But as it happened, for us, it was a woman as well. Daphne O'Ran left the BBC a year later and uh, became the first woman to own the studio and to set one up and the first woman to do. Women have a good uh, history in music. We just don't get credit for this is day to day for a very explaining. We can go and record it. Send them up to Windows. Uh, just a short, uh, short, uh, short, 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 and then with the high notes of the weather. This is all built out of these two sounds that we've seen in the recording. Yeah, 